My friends, I've got some things to talk about this morning, part of which includes being a luthier for 40 years. I'll tell you about a few more things I found over the weekend, especially one real cool mystery find that I just got to know what it is, and I'm hoping you'll help me. And I'll show you some real good progress I made on the parlor guitar. We'll do all that right after this. My friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Monday, January 23rd, and I'm reflecting on 40 years as a luthier. It was probably about this time of the year that I started getting strong feelings that I was going to have to build my own instrument. I think it was around this time of the year that I had taken my trip down to Gruen Guitar in Nashville. We're in the general time frame 40 years ago. And on that trip down to Gruen Guitar in Nashville, uh, he wouldn't price the Lloyd Lore mandolin that he had in stock until I got down there. And when I got down there, it was about 4,000 more than I was expecting. You know, at that time, they were selling for around six to $8,000. And when I got down there, he wanted 12,500. Even six to eight was a stretch for me at that time. It was a huge, huge stretch. But I was going to make the stretch. Well, I guess in retrospect, I guess God had a different plan. And I guess I'm not real sad I didn't buy that mandolin. Even though it did have my birthday in it on the label, it had November 28th, 1924. Now, I wasn't born in 24. I was born in 54. So 30 years to the day before I was born, that mandolin had my birthday in there. And now reflecting on 40 years later, it, 30 years doesn't seem like that long. <laughs> About this time of the year, I was in a van pool with uh, a bunch of other folks, and we were riding back and forth to work to downtown St. Louis to work for Southwestern Bell. I was in the headquarters. And while we were making that trip back and forth, I was reading the Roger Simonoff book, his first edition book, and I read it cover to cover eight times. Then I went out and bought my wood, selected my wood, and built my very first mandolin. I finished it on... May 19th, 1983. This coming May 19th is really, I guess, my official start to my business because from that point forward, everybody wanted something from me on instruments. <laughs> it's amazing how everything changed after that. I don't have any regrets. I'm glad I built my own instruments. I always felt like if I built them myself, I could uh, play them. Now, I don't know why I felt that way. I still kind of feel that way, like I, even though I built several fiddles and I can't play a fiddle, <laughs> I'm still feeling like if I built a dobro, I could play a dobro, but I doubt it. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's neat to reflect on, back on all that. Uh, when, it, when we get around to May 19th, I'll get that original mandolin out and I'll play it for you 40 years later. I, I mentioned I made some good progress on the Washburn Parlor guitar. Not only did I take the bridge plate out on the inside because it was busted and it was made out of spruce, which is really not the best choice for a bridge plate. I replaced it with a nice Paduke bridge plate and got it right exactly where it's supposed to be. And then I built an ebony replacement bridge and I glued that on over the weekend. So that was just the call on the inside falling down. There it is. So there's what she looks like now. And she's really ready to go forward. The problem is I can't go much further forward. The reason I wanted to get this done out of the way is I wanted to stabilize this top where this top couldn't flex too much because I'm going to have to do some heavy duty pushing and pulling and everything on this to get this back in the line back up because it's you know, and I'm also going to have to take the neck out. So I just kind of wanted to stabilize this and get that done first. I'm going to have to reset the neck yet. I'm going to have to fix this back in. And I don't know if there's anything else that I have to fix. I haven't seen anything. Actually, I can tell you right now, the back is loose too in a place or two. I can feel it. So there's a lot of fixing up to do on this thing yet. And you will see a full video on it coming down the road. 
Just to interrupt the video for a second, uh, Emory gave me this back on January 13th. That's how late I am in reading it. <laughs> well, or at least it was written on January 13th. I don't know when she gave it to me. She probably gave it to me the day after that. But anyway, this is just one of those notes she picks out every once in a while and tells me to read it. Bill Green is the person who sent this to me, and he says, Good morning, Jerry. Just wanted to send you a quick note to let you know how much I love your YouTube videos. I think I've watched them all, some of them several times. I built a bender and now just getting ready to build a bridge slash fingerboard removing uh, heater. He says, if there's anything you want in the way of wood from up here in British Columbia, please let me know and I'll do my best to help you. Just want to let you know you have inspired me to begin building guitars and ukuleles. Thanks for being my mentor and keep all the good stuff coming. Best regards from the interior of British Columbia, Bill Green. Bill, thank you so much for that very nice note. I appreciate it very much. I think that's one of the most gratifying things that I've heard and I've heard it honestly countless times now is uh, how many people I felt like they could start building instruments after watching my videos. And so to me, that's really a good thing. So many people say to me all the time, you need an apprentice, you need an apprentice. Well, I did have one for a while. Caleb was here and you know, I did my best to work with Caleb and help him out and he did a good job and all that. We parted good friends and all that. Still stay in touch once in a while. And the point is, I've got 85,000 apprentices out there right now. <laughs> we just passed the 85.5 thousand mark. So thank you for being a subscriber, I appreciate it. And if you're brand new to the channel, I encourage you very strongly to go back and watch some of the roughly 1,500 other videos I have out there. There's a bunch of them. I mentioned to you that I had another unique find over the weekend, and I got no good guess what this is. I'm hoping somebody else does. Here it is. When you first look at it, your first thing is it's a tube of something. You know, it's a you know, like you squeeze it down and it's like, you know, like toothpaste, except very small. That's not what this is. There's no hole on the end. Uh, there's almost like there could have been a little plunger on the end. I mean, I'm not saying that's what that is. I'm just saying I can't get it to move. I haven't actually tried to move it with force, but let's just see if I can. I thought maybe this, this might pull up on the end here. Anyway, there's a little tiny, like, nail-like thing on the very end there. It doesn't seem to want to move. It's got rings around it here. I'm pretty sure this was round, completely cylinder round at one time. It's been crushed. Here's the unique feature. See the holes down through here? Now, those holes are graduated. I think they start out at 100. They go 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, you know, right on up the line. Each one of those holes. So it starts out down here like 100 and then it just goes up by 50 each time. On the back, it says 227 Broadway, New York. And then it says patents applied for. And it's got P-A-T apostrophe S is the way they spelled it. And then applied A-P-P-L apostrophe D and then four, F-O-R. So that's, that's the story on that. I'm trying to figure out what that is. You know, when I first saw it, and because of the few connections that I've had to the Civil War, I got to wondering, I thought, could this be a fuse? You know, could this be something where you hit the end and it makes a powder charge go off or something like that? And this graduation would tell you how strong perhaps or something like, I'm just making this up because I have no idea. But that's probably over romanticizing it. It's probably nothing to do with the Civil War. But I believe it's copper. It's very old, I can tell that. It's really, really old. And I found it right there with all the other stuff that's from the 1800s. I also found a whole bunch more shotgun badges, uh, shotgun head stamps. I uh, started looking them up and starting to write them, writing them down, putting them on a chart. And the theme is most of them are, uh, they're 1890-ish up to about 1920 is kind of where the majority of them fall. And most of them fall in the 1890. And actually quite a few of them are pre-1890, but they don't have a specific date. They just say pre-1890. So that's the time frame we're working on. Based on a few of the 
things that we found that the uh, archaeologists saw, they, they feel like the site's older than I'm saying. They feel like it's at least from the 1850s, if not earlier. So it's, it's pre-Civil War, it looks like. And then, of course, I found an 1885 coin back there, too, which could have been dropped in 1895, for all I know. But anyway, I just would like your help on this. I would really like to know what that is. Again, I think it's supposed, this is supposed to be open and I believe it's supposed to be perfectly cylindrical or, you know, uh, round. I don't see any other clue on it to, as to what it could be other than those graduations from 100 up to around 300, something like that, going by 50. If you've got a good guess, I would love to hear it. I just wanted to say uh, I've uh, revised the words to my song I just wrote. If you don't know about the song, if this is the first time you're hearing about it, uh, go back and check out my shop talk from this past Friday. Uh, I wrote a song based on viewer suggestions and based on a lot of the artifacts that I found here on the farm. It's called The Wedding Band. And I uh, have revised the words to it, and I have a version that I just sung this morning that I'm going to play for you now, and uh, hope you enjoy that. Sarah Mary John in 64, in that same year he marched off to war. In the valley he left Sarah all alone. Would change soon after he had gone. She washed the baby's clothes in the nearby spring, and it was there she lost her precious wedding ring. Now, feeling more alone, she longed for his return. The nights were long as her heart would yearn. One hundred. 60 years come into view and her precious wedding ring was found anew as if her soul were there for all to see Sarah John and the baby the war raged on as Sarah made her way Baby grew more like John every day. She prayed that one day soon the war would end. And she'd see John coming round the bend. And despite the odds, John made his way home. Though weak and sick, Sarah would hang on. Till the baby's daddy held him to his breast Allowing Sarah to find eternal rest One hundred sixty years come into view And her precious wedding band was found anew Twas if her soul were there for all to see Sarah John and the baby Sarah John and the baby Well, before I let you go, there's only one other thing I want to say, and that is that I have six instruments on the on the shelf that I haven't looked at yet, plus this one. I do, I have made commitments that a couple more are coming that I agreed to, so I know I'm gonna have a couple more. But I just wanna say, and I don't want anybody to misinterpret this, listen to, carefully to what I'm saying, because people always misconstrue these and turn them around to what I say. I'm go, after I get done with all of these, I'm not gonna accept anything else coming in the shop for a while. And the reason is I want to get caught up. I'm really far behind on other things I need to do here on the, on the farm. And I can't do them when I've got all this other work and people waiting on me, you know. So I'm going to try to get this stuff caught up, uh, catch up on a few farm chores, 
and then start accepting instruments again. I'm not quitting business, I'm not going out of business or anything like that. I am only postponing things for a while. And uh, the only exception to that would be if a person is local here, like, you know, say they live in Rolla, they've got an instrument, they need it fixed. You know, if it's not a big deal, I'll let them bring those, that kind of thing. Like if it's just a quick setup or if it's just some little minor thing broke that I can fix. You know, I'll accept local stuff like that, but you know, just because of friends and relatives and family and all the, you know, your acquaintances around here, the local folks like that, I'm still gonna accept. But other than that, I'm not going to accept anything else coming in for a while till I get caught up. So I hope that's clear. I hope nobody misconstrues it because everybody always takes these things I say and say, he's quitting business. He's not going, he's not doing anymore. <laughs> and that's not what I'm saying. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. I got to go cut firewood. That's just another one of the things that keeps me behind. But, uh, you know, it's my own choice. I know I, there's ways around it. I just haven't chose those ways yet. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for reliving my 40 years of memories with me. Yeah.